joined here with Joe Patton, the head of the Dairy Advisory Service, and I said that's what this board is focused about. How can we farm in a way that's environmentally sustainable, but also profitably? And I said we're looking at it in a number of different ways. But we have a table here, which looks, I suppose, there's three columns in it. The first one is looked at the period pre-expansion. Now we're looking at where we are now and where we want to go. Okay. So if we look back and what has happened over the last decade, and I suppose we're really focused on this figure here that's highlighted in red of pasture utilised. And we really want to make the point of how important pasture utilisation is to driving profitability of our business. Okay. So in the last decade, we can see that milk production per cow has significantly increased. What does that mean? Our cows are eating more. Our cows are eating about a half a ton more than what they were a decade ago. Okay. So we have higher EPI cows. They're calving more compactly in the spring when we want them to calve. So we're getting longer season at grass, longer grazing season. We're operating at higher stocking rates, higher intake per cow, higher milk production. And that's what's driving this significant increase in grass utilization. Okay, all of those are very positive things that have happened. On the other hand, we have drifted up in terms of concentrate intake per cow or concentrate utilized per cow. We've increased slightly on fertilizer nitrogen and Lawrence talked a lot about, I suppose, our requirement to reduce our nitrogen surplus and bring back down our nitrogen level. But overall, this drive up in stocking rate, milk production per cow has significantly increased farm profitability. And this is the average farm back, pre-expansion was 2007, 2009 average, compared to 2020. You can see about a doubling of farm profitability per hectare driven by this increase in stocking rate and increase in grass utilisation. Now, if you've been coming to open days for the last, I suppose, 15 years here, we had been very focused on that if you expand, it has to be done from a grass-based system and it was going to be driven by increased grass utilisation. And within reason, we have achieved that. And when you consider what happened in most other countries in the world where ex where they, they had the potential to expand. It was generally driven by brought in feed and a reduced profitability and particularly higher levels of indebtedness and higher risk. We have seen that as we've increased production, we've actually driven down the level of debt per cow and per kilo of milk produced. OK, so we're less indebted now than what we were back pre-expansion. OK, so all of that is very good. Right. And has been very positive. I suppose when we look into the future, and this is where the average farm is today, the reality is probably a lot of you are well ahead of that in terms of where you're achieving. But I suppose we have put up here a target, and what this target is, is where profit is optimised or maximised. Okay, we have a figure here of about two and a half thousand a hectare. But we've added in a cost of about 300 euros a cow for labour for yourself to take out of it off of this. So to compare this figure to these two, you're looking, there's an extra um, about 300 euros a cow or about 800 euros a hectare gone in for your own labour. There's also, this is done at uh, assuming a lower milk price of 29 cent a litre in the future. Okay, so this is, a you know, much significantly improved profitability. But what's going to drive it? And it's again going to be focused on the things that have driven us for the last 10 years. Increasing milk production per cow, which again is going to be driven by higher EBI cows, which produce milk at higher composition and produce it over a longer gra uh, grazing season because of the higher, um, the, the higher EBI and the more compact spring calving. The next one, and it's a very particular important one, and is one of the key drivers of pasture utilization, is stocking rate. Okay, and it's very important that we match the stocking rate to the amount of grass grown. It's very easy to drive up stocking rate, much easier than any of these other parameters to achieve is to drive up stocking rate, put extra cows in the platform. But if the grass growth isn't there to match it, you get system drift into higher input systems, buying in feed in low margin business. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Okay. This model here, I suppose, assumes that all of the land is available for grazing. The reality is, for a lot of you, the farm is fragmented and you'll operate at a slightly higher stocking rate on the milking platform and maybe an overall stocking rate of somewhere around two and a half cows per hectare. OK, so what does that mean for uh, on a milking platform? If you determine, I suppose, where to stock that milking platform, 
or key, I suppose, criteria to find that. Can you fully feed the cows at grass for six months of the year? So from April to September, whatever six months work best for you, can you fully feed the cows at grass? Okay? If you have to be going in buffer feeding right throughout the summer months, you know, and you can't get six months fully fed of grass, then you're not growing enough grass for the stocking rate you have. Okay? And you need to adjust one of them. Okay? I suppose Lawrence uh, and Brendan would have covered, I suppose, very well, I suppose, how the, the requirement of a reduction in nitrogen that we have to do to drive down our, our, uh, our nitrogen surplus, and that's going to be dealt with in detail at the second next board in terms of grass clover. And the other one, I suppose, that the big system drift risk, really, is around concentrate, bringing in concentrate to, buy, uh, to, to increase uh, milk production, to chase a small margin. And when we look at it from three or four different perspectives, okay, we look at it from an economic perspective first. If you're driving up stocking rate with bought-in concentrates, it's low margin stuff, it works at high milk price, but it can, you know, it can reduce profitability when you do it at lower milk prices. Also, from an environmental perspective, can we justify bringing feed from Southeast Asia, or South America, or anywhere in the world, and drawing it to Ireland to produce milk to sell back out to the rest of the world. Can we stand over that? Okay? And the reality is we can't justify it from an, eco from an environmental sustainable perspective. The third aspect of it, and the third risk is around bringing in all this feed to drive milk output, is from a market perspective. So, Ornua, have been marketing Irish dairy products around the world as grass-fed. Glanby are at it as well, and Dairy Gold are going at it as well now, of marketing Irish dairy products around the world as being grass-fed. Can we then justifiably bring in grain from around the world and sell it without undermining our product value? Okay? So, I suppose a key focus of us, and this is, as we see here on this target, is it's going to drive our profitability as this pasture utilised. What's going to allow us to achieve that, I suppose, is grass grown. Okay, and that's going to be driven by, I suppose, the, the soil fertility. Clover is going to become a very important part of it in the future. Our own grazing skills, okay, which we can always invest in and work on. The stocking rate, which has to be matched to the amount of grass that's grown. The milk production per cow, which is going to be driven by calving date and genetic merit. The maintenance, the amount of the cow feed that goes into maintenance and this one here, a feed supplement, which generally reduces pasture utilised per hectare. Just one other table on this uh, pasture utilised. It explains, this table looks to explain the factors that drive profitability on Irish dairy farms. So, if we look at how important is litres per cow, it explains less than 10% of the variation in profitability. Milk solids per cow, somewhere around 20% of the variation in profitability is explained by milk solids per cow. Concentrate fed or feed fed bought in for a cow, less than 5%. Stocking rate becoming more important, you know, somewhere around 20, 30% of the variation. But the big driver, the one that will drive them all, and it's driven by stocking rate, it's driven all of these feed into it, is the amount of grass utilised is the best predictor of profitability on an Irish dairy farm. If you're looking at what is affecting the profit on an Irish dairy farm more than anything else, it's the amount of grass utilised per hectare. Okay, so I suppose that's I suppose the main part, the main message we want to get around is this focus on pasture utilised. One of the things about 2021 is going to be a relatively good year for dairy farmers, okay, as was 2020. So there is potential there on some farms that there is surplus there to invest in the farm. And I suppose our view is that if you're investing in the farm, it should be invested in, in things that future proof it, okay? That'll make you more sustainable in the future, more economically and more environmentally sustainable in the future. The first one we've listed up there is potential investment is soil fertility, okay? Soil fertility and clover because they're linked, okay? To establish clover, you need to have soil fertility right. Obviously, to drive grass growth, grass production, soil fertility is very important. Okay, 2021 into 22 is a very good chance to get that sorted out. The second one I have up there is slurry storage. Now, a lot of the times we talk about slurry storage, we see it as a compliance cost. It's a cost we have to have. But if you spread slurry in the winter months of November, December, January, when there's no grass growing, 
the recovery of nitrogen is virtually zero. Okay? I just focus here now from an economic perspective. Right? You get virtually no nitrogen recovered out of that slurry. If you apply it through April, May and June, you'll recover about 30% of the available nitrogen if it's spread with low emission slurry spreading and applied in April, May and June when the grass is actively growing. Okay? So you're recovering nitrogen. We are going to be limited in the amount of nitrogen we can apply in the future. And why would we waste some of it in the winter when we could store it and spread it in the spring? It will give us a return on investment. It's not going to be a massive return, but you're going to get a return on investment of the order of 3 or 4% on the capital. And you're making your business more sustainable for the future. The other areas of our investment are really around labour and management of the of the business and particularly in the spring okay you all know spring is a very very busy time and as we increase the compactness of calving and as cow numbers go up it gets busier okay we are always at risk i suppose with young calves that they may not be marketable during the spring and we may have to hold them for longer on the farm so we may not be able to shift them off the farm at 10 days of age and having adequate calf facilities just de-risks you there in the spring. It takes some of the stress out of the farm in the spring and takes some of the risk around the business, okay? And the other area there, I suppose, to help improve on labour efficiency is, is there room for technologies that have been proven to reduce labour, okay? Whether, you know, it is drafting facilities or these extra calf housing facilities or the abilities to go in and clean out the calf house during the spring with a tractor and loader. You know, all of these small things, I suppose, you have the potential in 2021 to sort out some of those issues to make the fire more labour friendly, more labour efficient for the spring period when it's at most stress. Okay. So we have just three or four take home messages of just what we want to remember from this, this board, I suppose. Firstly, we have made significant progress okay, over the last decade. We have gone in the right direction. We have increased um, milk production per cow, stocking rate and grass utilisation, which has driven an increase in profitability. But we need to continue to go in that direction and not to drift off into higher input systems. Okay? That is our biggest risk, I suppose, as we see in the future. Okay? And if you have surplus available in 2021, it makes sense to invest it into future-proofing your farm and these technologies here to try and make your farm more sustainable in the future.